That was a bit of coke there at the end. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Adams TV. Hello. Uh, you have just been hearing the glorious sounds of a wah pedal. Yes. And not just a wah pedal, a wah pedal from the 1970s. An actual, An actual wheel. Um, wheel. A wheel wah. A wheel wah. A wheel wah. <laughs> it's um, the Danish thing so is not. <laughs> mute your, mute your <laughs> thing. A wah wah binks. <laughs> this little funny thing here, this rolly back and forth pedal. Uh, which you've seen on guitar players' for floorboards for 60 years? Since 1966, right? So that was, well, probably a little bit before then, but definitely since 1966, that's when when it sort of came to itself and it became... What we <laughs> Stop crying, baby. Sorry. Uh, nobody puts baby in the corner. Cry baby in the corner. I mean, there's a long, long, long history about this. We said this. we wouldn't go into this, didn't we? So what yes. we've done is, uh, yes, the... the, the the whole vibe of the sound of a crybaby dates back probably nearly a hundred years now to old trumpet players doing the thing like that. Clyde uh, McCoy is a bit, yeah. but anyway. Electronically, you've probably started to see people using devices that made these kind of noises in the 50s even, uh, and then kind of the 60s yeah. when it was when it kind of officially became yeah. the I think the pedal. first, just to quickly jump into it, not too much, I think Chet Gat Atkins was kind of the first. Chet to Atkins. Of, Chet, Chet, Chip, Chip, Chip Atkins. Chip Atkins. Chip Atkins. Chip Atkins. Uh, he who, was one of them. He basically in, invented something himself that was a similar to it, but mm. then you didn't hear it till much later on when Vox had a thing anyway. and made a thing. It's, it's a long Jimmy story. Jimmy Dunlop explains it much better. Yeah. So here's a clip. The origin of the wah is, uh, is an interesting story because I, I think it is one of those kind of accidental effects. It starts with the relationship between Thomas Organ and Vox and a guy named Brad Plunkett. My name's Brad Plunkett and uh, I did invent the Wah Wah pedal. That was one of my uh, uh, things that I take some pride in. I went to work for a company called Thomas Organ Company uh, when I was 18 years old. The president of the, of the company, a fellow named Joe Benaren, who was a real entrepreneur, made a deal with Vox in England to uh, uh, allow him to manufacture Vox products in the United States. And uh, pretty soon we were uh, doing engineering on Vox products. Now, the other kind of thread that it bears some weight is there was a guy named Del Casher uh, who was working with Thomas Organ Company in Sepulveda uh, doing some demo work. He was employed by them at the time. When I came to California after college, and one day I got a phone call, and they said, I'm with a company called Warwick Electronics, and they're buying a company called Vox, and we're going to have a big amplophonic orchestra called the Vox Amplophonic Orchestra. Electric trumpets, electric saxophones, electric flutes, and we'd like to have you play guitar. And he said, by the way, this is no fly-by-night organization. It's owned by Warwick Electronics. Warwick is owned by Whirlpool. And Whirlpool and Warwick Electronics also own Thomas Organ. Every one of us had an amplifier in front of us. At this point, the Vox UK amplifier was the Super Beetle amp, which was a tube amplifier. Warwick Electronics, Thomas Organ said, we got to save money on these things, so let's cut the cost on all this. So one of the things was they noticed a little funny switch that said MRB, the mid range boost switch. And the switch was very expensive, about four dollars. 
One day uh, I was talking to my boss and uh, he was wondering if I could devise a circuit that would allow the mid-range boost to be tuned with a potentiometer, which only cost about 30 cents. I worked on it for a while uh, in the morning and uh, in a relatively short time I had a parallel tuned circuit that I could change the frequency of by rotating a uh, potentiometer. And what Plunkett did was come up with a circuit that would, basically it was a sweepable EQ, and it just took one pot to do it, and it was brilliant. So I went next door and uh, uh, asked a friend of mine, John Glennon, if he would uh, plug his guitar into the uh, pile of wires and resistors and capacitors I had on the bench. He strummed a couple of chords, and I turned the knob on the uh, potentiometer, and it went whack, whack, whack. And we looked at each other, and I won't tell you exactly the words we said, but we said, wow, this is really great. We started thinking about, well, how are we going to, how's the guitarist going to be able to operate this thing? His hands are already busy. And uh, there was a Vox Jaguar organ uh, sitting in front of one of the other engineer's benches. So I said, hey, John, go steal that uh, uh, expression shoot, volume pedal from uh, Frank's organ, let's put the pot in there. Pretty soon we were drawing a modest crowd and everybody agreed that it sounded pretty good, but uh, didn't really know how good it was going to be. The origin of the name was they were, they were fishing around for something to call it. And uh, somebody at Thomas Organ said, it sounds like a baby crying. And they just turned it around, became the crybaby. If you take a look at the wah-wah to a guitar, it's much the same thing that a cup mute does to a trumpet, in the sense that it changes the acoustic cavity in which the sound resonates. Yeah, the, uh, the way the wah-wah works essentially is a filter, and uh, it's a filter which is the shape of like a peak, like a mountain. It lets certain frequencies through, but it blocks all the others that are on the side, and depending on the position of the rocker pedal, you move it either down in low frequencies or up in high frequencies. And it's just like your mouth, too. It does the same thing. Your mouth changes shape uh, to produce different frequencies. The uh, next day, uh, the president of the company sent down word that he wanted to hear this thing. And he said, that sounds like a Clyde McCoy wah-wah trumpet thing. And I thought to myself, What's a Clyde McCoy wah wah trumpet thing, but found out later. And he called Clyde McCoy and he said, you, can, can we give you some money and we'll use your name? And Clyde McCoy was living in Louisiana somewhere and he said, hey, fine with me. That was it. That was the beginning of Clyde McCoy and the end of Clyde McCoy, other than the fact that Clyde McCoy's name went on the bottom plate of the wah wah pedal that was commercially released. And, I, and he said, this would be perfect for the trumpet. And besides, we got the Vox Amplifonic Orchestra. We have four trumpet players in there. We can have four wah-wahs for the trumpet players. We can have four wah-wahs for the saxophone player. Wow, we could, we could sell, look at how, we could sell maybe 12 or 14 wah-wah pedals to these Vox Amplifonic Orchestras. And I said, no, 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 Joe, you don't get it. I said, this is really a guitar thing. So would you let me make a record? So I got my guitar and I got, my prototype wah pedal, my only one here, and I wrote the music too, and I used a drummer, and I played all the parts myself. I want to describe what the growl of a wah would sound like, what blues would sound like. I thought I covered everything. I even covered the sit time. So, I'm so pretty pleased to uh, have been the pioneer of seeing the vision and hearing the vision. And that's why I made the record. And it still, still sounds good to me today. And I'll let you be the judge, but I think it's pretty good. So that was just a little clip. So if you want to watch the rest of that, there will be a link in the yes. description. You know, the history of the wah. It's very interesting. The, the so, wah, the movie. Lots of brands make wah pedals, but yeah. only one makes the crybaby. Yeah. Probably the most famous synonymous branding of uh, Wah Wah's yeah. of all. And that's Jim Dunlop. Yes. Um, this particular Jim Dunlop Super Cry Baby I'm holding in my hands is an original 70s one lent to us by the wonderful people at Jim Dunlop. Yeah. Um, Adam Best, thank you very much for talking and about And that's what you just heard 
in the uh, beginning. In the beginning. Yeah. So what we're going to do in this video is that there's actually there's about twenty, isn't there? Twenty twenty five different. Oh man, there's in the there's lots of things. There's fourteen signature models on. You know, it's <laughs> it's crazy. And then you got everything from sixty nine pounds. Yeah. Or, I think or, or might, <coughs> whatever might be it is, the cheaper, cheaper ones, the cheaper ones, more affordable ones, up to you know the things we're going to look at in a minute yeah. as well. But. Um, and, and stay tuned to the end of this video because the very last Wawa that we're going to show you is a very, very, very special celebration of the 50th anniversary yeah. of Dunlop. Yeah. So the first pedal we're going to go with is, oh, not that one, <laughs> this one. Mm, that one. Don't they say something like they've sold over 5 million of these? It, I'm, it, probably, it's, it's probably true. It's, it's, it's absolutely insane. Yeah. So 1982, this, right? This Sorry. is the GCB95. Uh, it's effectively the the sort of the entry level Dunlop crybaby. Yeah. It's an all metal pedal. It's not there. You know, it's not like a plastic knockoff of a of a, of a crybaby. No. It's just a simple single voice. In other words, there's no other switching or anything like that in here. Um, wah pedal. It's the standard crybaby wah pedal that came out in 1982. Yeah. And it's been like that ever since. Ever since. And the way that it works is that there's a little there's a little. <laughs> There's a little thing that goes like this, a little an inductor. an inductor, and it makes the tone, the cue of the tone goes, wow, wow. So it sounds like a baby crying. Hence the reason it's called yeah, a wah Exactly. And so, there's many different versions of that. Yeah. So here we go. I'm um, going to plug this into Pete's board here. Mm -hmm. um, typically, the wah is the first pedal in the chain. Yeah. I think Although if, sometimes people go, if you're using fuzz, sometimes it's either wah then fuzz, sometimes it's fuzz, fuzz then wah. wah. Yeah. It's personal I mean, preference. You, you should try to, you know, experiment with the, that a but, little but bit. Typically, like you do with things. the wah's near the front, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, we are going Oops. to run this wah pedal. We can run it either off batteries or off of a power supply. We're using a Dunlop power supply. No, we're not. An, we're using an MXR an MXR one. isobrick, but MXR and Dunlop is uh, one and the same. One and the same. So, yeah. here we are. You get to listen now to what your standard, bog standard GCB95 sounds like. Yeah, so this is a D chord, and this is without the wah. Now there is a, there is a way of approaching a wah. Turn it on just by clicking the top, and then you can go. Move your foot up, forward, back and forth. Uh, it's, and there's not, that's all it does. There's not, you can't, there's no pots inside we'll you can that trim. Another Shaft. I mean, that's, that's kind of the thing. So people will then, will then sort of leave it uh, at some Cocked, that, as we that's, say. That's less normal. The, 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 that money for nothing thing is one of the only ones that you'd really hear that kind of. Yeah. Uh, where you, well, there's, there's, I, I, I think there must be other guitar mm. things. I'm sure there is. Please comment in the, in the comment section below where you sort of set it to a point and you go. You can just hear it immediately. If I take it off. I mean, it doesn't you can sound kind right, of does it? simulate it. With the tone, but not really. Not you really. need that. that yeah. You know what I mean? There's a. I don't know what that was, but you know, you can you yeah. can make that kind of. And I'm sure we are forgetting a million songs no, this, that that I'm played with the wah pedal over the ages. So uh, again, we could have picked like there's bucket loads of Dunlop wahs. Yeah. Um, I guess the coolest innovation in recent years from Dunlop, as far as wahs have concerned, is this idea of taking the traditional wah format. Let's get two side by side here so that you can see. So here's normal size wah. Now. As pedal boards have become more popular, and you can see Pete's using a pedal board now, one of the problems was that the big wah didn't really fit on a sort of a more compact board. Fly board. And so um, Dunlop created the mini wah. Yeah. And there is a mini wah version of the pedal that, that Pete is playing. It's not the one I'm holding, but it's uh, the same housing. Yeah. Um, and that's very, very popular yeah. too. Actually, that's um, got three twin pots inside. It has. So you can so you get three different uh, quacks, if yes. you will, the Q factor, right? 
whether it's a lower or a high. <laughs> now, before we go into talking about uh, perhaps some of the signature Wawa's, the kind of like the deluxe Wawa or whatever you might want to call it, yeah. like the, 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 the model up from the GCB95 is, is typically the 535Q, uh, which is what I've got in my hand here. Now the 535Q is again, another Wawa same housing and everything like that, but with lots of options to change the way in which the sweep of the mm -hmm. Q works. Mm -hmm. so you just get different kind of wah sounds. It's got like a boost thing that you can cut. The idea with this red button on is you kind of kick it with the side of your foot to boost it in and out. Yeah. And you've got um, volume and again, Q uh, controls on the side here. Yeah. So it's kind of like, if you just want a wah that you can really cover all your bases with, Th you this wah, with the 535. This wah was the wah that uh, Jimmy Dunlop um, developed with well by talking to artists right and saying what they wanted to have you know fr more so they can get more out of just the standard wah you know can i get this i, I don't like that can we can you add some of yeah. that and eventually they came up with that, that so that, i suppose that's what drives all the signature wahs isn't it people have a certain you know classic wah that they yeah. maybe bought <laughs> you know and they go oh that's the one that i like better but anyway yeah. let's play I mean, this I, in i used to i used to take off if i take this here and i'll show you if you can zoom in on this in here so that that little bit inside you can see that little there's a little uh with teeth in it yeah, teeth plastic in it. Oh, teeth. i'm getting my get yeah. grease on my fingers here uh there's little teeth in there you can take it off and you can loosen it a bit and then you can turn it slightly like a little bit more and then and then put the teeth back <coughs> on so you get a different that's what i used to do with mine so i got a little bit more yeah less uh highs and yeah. a little bit more lows what so it went like that instead uh, so but I guess so. The idea with the with the five three five Q is that you can make all those adjustments much much more easily. Exactly. So um, Pete can plug it in. Whilst he's doing that, again, little I don't know if you guys I'm sure will know this. You might be looking at this going, how do you switch it on and off then? Um, so here's the, the switch. You can see it's underneath the the toe of the of the plate on the top here. And all you do is you bet you might hear this on my lapel here. But if you push down hard at the toe end, you can hear that it clicks. Click. So that's what. So there's there's again. I don't think any of these wires. One of the things with the, with a wire, not many have like a visual indicator as to whether they're on or not. That's some, second, some do, but yeah, that's another thing that uh, that was developed in in conjunction with artists, and you know that oh, I can't see when it's on. So the yeah. Van Halen one, for instance, has got two massive lights on the has top it? of it. You know, yeah. so you so you can't forget because the worst thing you do is you know ram into a song and the first yeah. set after the break and then the wire's on and it, yeah, it looks awful. like the, the slash one by the looks things has got a an and it's got somebody on the side look. yeah so you can't so it's some of them bikes. you can see anyway yeah. look so 535q whilst pete's playing i'll adjust that silver knob on the side if i can and you can reach the two on the other reach side around and reach around those. i was waiting for that oh you can hear already that this is much less it doesn't it doesn't go as dark and it doesn't go as high at the moment. See, now it's not as dark when you yeah. set that. Whoa, boost! Think, sorry, Pete, I'm going to have to take your foot off. I think one of these controls is, is the, boost. the boost of yeah. the volume. So yeah, one is the boost. I, I won't go completely insane with that. Um, there we go. So that's... Yeah. This is you need to. This you is need a, to tweak you, this. You need to tweak this, and then you probably set it somewhere, and then you know. Yeah, and you might find that you've got one guitar that sounds good on a certain setting, and then you've got a different guitar that sounds better on a different setting. But we can we can try um, that right now because that. I can take this Les Paul and uh, we can yeah. <laughs> we can see what that does. Uh, so it's a completely. There's more output in these. Yeah, but, way more. But still, you get. It 
favourite kind of wiring. I mean, I think there's two. You, the funky wire thing just sounds mint. I yeah, love all that. Yeah. yeah. But my favourite thing is the kind of the sort of Clapton. Uh, that sort of late eighties Clapton thing, where he'd go into a bend and a and a wire at the same time, and get yes. these in, like killer, killer kind of sort of. Maybe not as much gain, right? I think I think the strap would accentuate it better. I might be wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's I vaguely hear the song that you're... What is that song? Yeah, yeah. Uh, bad. Pretending. Pretending. Yeah, she was just pretending. Uh, but anyway, so that kind of clapton <laughs> thing, he's a big, uh, or certainly in certain parts of his career, has been a really, yeah. really big wah-wah yeah. kind of user. Wah-wah. Which I think leads us on to talking about famous wah users and oh, people man. who've got signature pedals, and we've yeah. got a couple of others here, but the list of signature people on the, the Dunlop wah thing is crazy. We've got uh, as long two as my, um, here of, I mean, I, I got the mini version. He does a full size version and a mini version of this. Yeah. But Jimi Hendrix, probably the most famous wah player of all time. Him uh, and Kirk. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Jimi originally. Uh, <laughs> now, before anybody, one of the things that we didn't do a massive amount of research on, of course, was that if you see old black and white pictures of Jimi, uh, you'll probably see him using a Vox wah. Uh, yeah, so I'm at some point later in his but I life think there was the or in his estate's life anyway, the deal has been done to kind of license that Jimmy tone to Dunlop. So now they do the Hendrix. Yeah, but I see, I think the, the whole, that's that's the whole history of the wild pedal when uh, Thomas Organ and Vox was, was the Italian company at the time and then it became Crybaby and they licensed that name. So in Italy, loads of people were making I Crybaby see. pedals. You know, so it was because they'd never licensed the cry baby. They just like it sounds like a baby crying, mm. and so that name normally today you would license it, well, and it is licensed. But anyway, so that's why the Vox and the cry baby, and the, you know, it's all the same. And then till Jimmy took Dunlop took it over. And anyway, that's the whole story <coughs> you can watch in the video. But so, but anyway, so look, so there's a Hendrix Wah slash has got one with bucket loads of features on it, including a built-in distortion pedal. Other artists, as you say, you know, Kirk Hammett, John Petrucci, Joe Bonamassa, um, Zach Wild, uh, what did I say, Ed Van Halen, um, Buddy, Buddy Guy has got the, the dot one. I mean, there's, there's, I think there's about 14. Right. Six. So there's probably more now, I mean, maybe 15. Look, I'm sure we've forgotten someone massively famous as well. Dimebag Daryl. Dimebag Dime Daryl, yeah. Uh, so they all, they were all, you know, they were all, um, you know, big fans of the Crybaby used wires all the time. Yeah. And uh, so, should we have a little listen to both of these, just back to back? I like um, I like these little wires. It's a it's a different experience from a from a normal wire. You have to put your yeah. You can hardly see it in the camera. Is, so it, is it basic? What you're saying? It's a it's a. If you're used to something big and then you go to something small, it's just a different experience. Yes, basically yeah. that is what I'm saying. <laughs> And the other way around, it's the same. You have to get used to it. I mean, where, when where you, are you if you can, if it? you can put my, if you can get the camera, and you can see it in that camera over there. It's very. If you put your foot on the front like you would do on a normal wire, yeah. it doesn't. It doesn't really. That's really weird. You kind of want it like here, don't you? You want it. You want to put it right there in the middle, yeah. so your foot is sticking out yeah. over the front of the you pedal. You kind of want to imagine that instead of instead of. Imagining like you'd have the pedals like here and here. It's like right in the middle. You can it? see where, where, the, where, the, where this where this goes. That's where ah. that's that's where you want it. So like oh I see good line. That's like a golf tap, isn't it? Where you like to say have to get your head over the ball in a certain way. So you're missing like that bit down. out of the thing. So it's still that bit, right? So anyway, let's listen to the. Uh... I don't think Jimmy used delay, did he? Mm, don't know. Or a really clean sound. Like that. It's funny they all sound different, isn't it? They got a little, they got their own thing, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just. I mean, it's not a fussy tone, you need, but yeah, it's we've got you need the wrong a martial, kind of distortion a sound. Completely, but, but it's got it's got that thing, man. You know, it's got that. Yeah. I really like this little one. Yeah. 
you can hear if you just added the univibe in there as well, so that it was you're getting the wire and it was going oh, 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 at the same time. You can <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally yeah, you hear, can hear it. I mean, and again, we're at we've like, got a universe somewhere, with we? really low volume, but it's Jimmy yeah. again is another one of those guys where you you just can't play, you can't get authentic Jimmy tones. You can't recreate his You're songs not unless him. you have a wah. Yeah, Steve, absolutely. Stevie Ray, another monster, monster wah player yeah. who doesn't have a signature wah. Yeah, yeah, um, he doesn't have one. No, but mm. understandably, yeah, as it would be he's... difficult for him to try and design one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these days. Um, so let's... Yeah, man, I mean, let, this let's go really over cool. to, uh, Let's change to your Les Paul okay. whilst I plug this in. Um, okay, so the slash one here, as my colleagues have just reliably, reliably even informed me, uh, needs an 18 volt supply <coughs> because uh, it's running two effects. It's running a, a wah and a distortion. Uh, so you just need a little bit of extra juice. Uh, so I don't. What are these on the side? We've got gain and volume and that's it. right. Got it. So the, presumably that's all to do with the distortion side of things, is it? But we'll find out. So okay. So um, so the distortion doesn't work when you without the wah. Without the wah. So. So, while on. Oh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, it's very loose. I mean, the, the reason why it makes that little bit of noise because there's two batteries in there. Well, so I the top has got a compartment. We I haven't, haven't connected it, the batteries. But they're so flapping about you're inside. Just the... So. Okay, I might just turn that down a bit. Hey, hold on, hold on, do it again. What would he even play? What he what was Pretty he playing? Charlie Mine, obviously. What? Well, the solo from it. The solos. Oh. Right. This distortion wow. pedal doesn't really sound like a conventional distortion pedal no. to me. This sounds like something that wants to go into a driven amp into for a solo. Amp. So let's put so on put, some gain yes. in the front and then... I don't know that solo, but it, I, I, you I've can played tell. that since I was 13 so years just old. <laughs> put, the boot, put the boost in and see what happens. It was the boost. It was. Where's Rob Chapman when you need him? Yeah, absolutely. To do some slash stuff. But anyway, so there's an example. Sorry, everybody. If, if you're, yeah, if Sorry, you're, Slash, if you're watching If this. you're a big yeah. Slash fan and into his sound, obviously, he has a Dunlop wah. Um, yeah. So they're the only two signature wires that we pulled out the cabinet today because, as, as Pete said, we could go on forever. Um, if you're thinking to yourself, you know what? The one I liked the best so far was like the oldie fashioned one. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. You could do worse than just buy the Dunlop uh, Crybaby Clyde McCoy. Yep. Uh, Clyde McCoy was the trumpet player that kind of did that whole wah, wah, wah mm -hmm. um, thing. Uh, and so this is the, uh, and this is essentially is a, a Dunlop kind of replica of an old halo inductor um, wah. Yes. So let's have a little listen to this. Clyde, playing the trumpet. Oh, it's, it's really it's like more nasally toppy, isn't it? Yeah. It's supposed like to it. sound like it's funny. Everybody in the room is going. Wow, wow, wow. No, like, like they're making the wow mouth. Yeah. So everybody, when I'm, when I'm doing like. <laughs> Shaft. The ganache the and, and maybe go back to the strat as well. Just yeah, let's try of, that because I do like I do I do like the strat. Would you say that there are more sort of single coil players that use? Well, no, it's pretty 50-50, isn't it? It's I don't know. Really I mean, anything I think in that, particular? Yeah, I mean, to one it's just the a thing so. that at some point in your musical career, whether it's bass or, or you know, people are using them on pianos and on uh, on you know on um, like uh, roads and sort of stuff like that. <laughs> 
clavinets and it's really cool. What? I mean, there's a lot of heavy metal player, or, me, or sort of heavier mm. players to play them in there. Cause, uh, yeah, Dimeback. Yeah, Dimeback, you know. So I can't do that sort of stuff, no. but, you know. No! <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to, we've got to adjust for that. <laughs> So, um, uh, so another one is Bob Marley as well. You know, there's, sure. there's, there's loads, there's loads. loads. I mean, cool there's sounds. loads. Yeah. I mean, that's probably a bit more Stevie ba, ba, Wonder, ba, 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 actually. Ba, 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 yeah, but that's Stevie Wonder, ba, ba. isn't it? Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How cool is that? Anyway. I mean, there's lots of Stevie. Um, I think Stevie uses some stuff on, on some of the... He's Either it's a Q, Q or whatever, it's a wah pedal. So look, that was, that was the, the Clyde. Look, just in case uh, bass players are feeling left out, yeah. uh, there are, of course, um, you know, cool wah sounds with bass, you know, all yeah. that kind of Bootsy Collins funk stuff. Uh, but one of the little uh, bass wah pedals that is particularly popular with guitar players is the uh, Crybaby mini bass one and the reason for that is and this is i don't know who first invented this i know steve oh. vai had, sort of had his morley pedal would do this but these yeah. are sprung loaded so the idea is you see that so when it's when your foot's not on it the pedal is off yeah and then as soon as you move anything on the pedal it's kind of on which i think is kind of a cool feature yeah. obviously what it means you can't do like pete did for that um mark knopfler kind of vibe yeah you can't you just leave it on uh, but i know yeah the steve vai bad horsey wire i think is the or yeah, Same there is a there is a more wah, and there's some you know there's loads of other manufacturers yeah. that oh loads that does wars as well you know uh, but so that, it's, a, it's a really cool cool and they might, do a big one of uh, like this as well yeah you you might kind of think that, that that because it says it's bass it won't work for guitar but it completely works for guitar it's just a different sound again so let's have a little listen to this it's gonna disappear under my foot because again so when it's off let's put my foot on it. That's really, really deep, basic, isn't it? But yeah. there I mean, is a it's... couple of controls here on the side. There's a volume and adjust to cue. So make the cue shorter. I don't like cueing. So you see, you can go from all the way from here. I think that's more of a funk sound because it hasn't got that top end and then you'd need the shrill the, top end to, yeah, to yeah, do a to solo. Get the you know all yeah. those old Steely Dan, uh, Steely Dan things where, it would, I don't know who was playing on, whether it was like Elliot Easton or... Yeah. Um, Larry Carlton or whatever, but like Larry there was all, all those old that they they used to use that kind of quacky uh, clean. Yeah, what was that called? That's called I'm a trying to a, think. A, a, a a yo yo or something. Yo yo yo. Was it? I, I think it's know. it's a different war. I think right. it's called a yo yo. It's got a setting. Yeah, it's got a setting. It's got right. a yo yo setting or something because it sounds like it goes yo 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 yo. With distortion, the bass one, or probably. So look, those were, I think, how many wires did we have? Six, seven, one, two, three, yeah, four, five, six, one. seven, seven different wires, yeah. including the, the old one from the 70s. Wow. But we have an eighth. We have an eighth yeah. to now. celebrate the 50th anniversary. And as you can see, we've not even opened it's this not one even yet. Opened. It's not even open. So join us for an unboxing live and exclusive, well, not exclusive, but it's live. It's not even live, actually, is it? But no. <laughs> so join us for a not like a pre-recorded, non-exclusive 
um, <laughs> unboxing, unboxing <laughs> of this. The 50th uh, anniversary Wabo. <coughs> yeah, I'm so excited, I just coughed. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh. Which camera are we on? Dun, 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 dun. Comes with its own little felt sock. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, look. Do, 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 do. It's wow. full. We had the Stormtrooper, now we've got the full C3PO. Dude, this is 24 karat gold plated. <laughs> Take this back. Is it? Mm. Yeah, it is. It's 24 karat gold plated. 24 karat player in the air. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, yeah, so that is probably the most expensive wah that you can buy. This gold plated crybaby wah celebrates <coughs> the 50 years since the original pedal hit the market in 1967. So it was last year, it was its 50th yeah. anniversary. Opening a whole new world of sonic expression for guitar players. Yes. So, Pete. Yes. Would you like to hear a Jim Dunlop crybaby wah in? 24 karat gold. I would love to. And you know what I also would love to? I would like to compare it to just to, to any the, of these the to 70, see if it's the 70s it, one? Yeah. Why, why not? not? To see if it uh That's a if great gold idea. sound any better. Let's see. <laughs> Let's compare it to the 70s one and then we can basically decide whether or not as a guitar playing fraternity we have improved or gone backwards in the last how old would a 77 be? 40 something years. Which is on? Oh. Yeah, it's all golden. So if you want your pedal board stolen, it's so bling. It's, it's very so bling. unbelievably bling. But you know what? I've I've seen they do them diamonds as well, like Swarovski's I've diamonds. I've seen the chrome ones. I think, the... I think we've got the chrome ones. We got ones chrome in ones, stock, yeah. but they've got, they've done them uh, bejazzled. Vajazzled. Oh, yeah, he's got one, hasn't he? Yeah, Gail's got one with the with the uh, bling on it. Vajazzled. 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 I mean, this is temperamental. It is as it's old as I am, 25 years I mean, old. You know why? It's, lo it's <laughs> lost the uh, rubber feet. That's why. Yeah, and you can. I can easy to switch the, it on and I off. I mean, yes, we have immensely approved our. Uh, ability to make better wah pedals. Yes, I agree. Uh, the, the, I like the gold the, one better. The, uh, the 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 span from here to there is is less on the old one, so you you only got that bit to to yeah. move your foot. Let's try both at the same time. I'm like Pinocchio. I mean, the new one sounds better. I mean, the golden one sounds golden. It sounds great, that gold one. Well, I haven't said that though. They've all got a vibe. So come on then, a little bit a of a Steve uh, vibe. I think we should get Justin to I, just I think you're right. to do a little bit Why of uh, hardcore threading Why because not? I don't do that. I'm not, you know, I you know, I like a wild pedal. I use it occasionally on different things. So I think we should get uh, Joshua. I want to, I want you want to, to do I something to do, as well? I like playing the wild. Do you want to sit over here? Yeah, I better, hadn't I? Okay. So yeah. we just uh so we just like should sign we just out sign and out say and thank we'll, you very that's much a good for idea. watching. Cheers, guys. Uh, I hope you like the videos that we make. So if you do, subscribe to this channel and we shall see you in your inbox soon. Goodbye.
Thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting, and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.